Hello and welcome to the Goes T Virtual Social. I'm Jasmine Hopkins with NASA Communications, and we are at Kennedy Space Center in front of the iconic countdown clock because we are counting down to the mission of the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite T, also known as Goes T. This is a NOAA mission that stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And this mission is also being launched by NASA's Launch Services Program. So joining me here to talk more about that is Andy Sokol, Vehicle Systems Engineer for NASA's Launch Services Program. Welcome, Andy. Thank you, Jasmine. Can you tell me a little bit about your role in this mission? Sure, well, um, I'm the Vehicle Systems Engineer mm -hmm. for Launch Services. So what I do, I'm sort of like a, your primary doctor for the rocket. So I'm going to watch the rocket as it as it grows up, you know, during its manufacturing and assembly and transport and stacking and and getting it all ready so that when uh, the spacecraft arrives, um, we can mate them up and I'll consult with our, you know, just like your doctor would, I'll consult with a team of specialists if we have any specific issues we need to look at so that when launch day comes, we know that the rocket has a clean bill of health. It's all grown up and it's ready to go out and fulfill its life purpose of launching the spacecraft into space. Perfect. That's a great example. Your primary care doctor. So as the vehicle system engineer uh, for the launch services program, what will you be doing on launch day? So on launch day, I'm actually the assistant chief engineer. So I'll be mm -hmm. on a console next to the chief engineer and we'll be monitoring the countdown. We'll be um, keeping track of any issues that come up. I'll help the chief engineer keep track of those. Um, I'll poll our, our technical team to make sure that they're comfortable and, and um, happy with the status and the health of the rocket going into launch. That's exciting. So you're going to be busy. Mm -hmm. We have a couple more questions for you. Uh, how does the Launch Services Program work with your partners at NOAA and Space Launch Delta 45 and United Launch Alliance? Wow. Well, Jasmine, there's a lot of teams that really <laughs> come together on launch day to make launch happen. So those are some, you know, you also have um, the folks like the range safety folks, you have the spacecraft team, you have the uh, tracking and data relay folks, we have the launch services program technical team, the ULA technical team, and all those teams are working together to come on launch day to make sure that everything's there. I mean, even our, our public affairs folks, I mean, everyone has a critical role to play. And it's amazing on launch day to see all those teams and all that teamwork culminate in a beautiful launch that you know it's just really a testament to how all those teams can work together within those teams and together with the other teams. That is awesome Andy and we are glad to be partnering with you as well. So is there a big button you push to launch the rocket? <laughs> Who makes that final decision? Can you tell us? I love there's no big button but I do <laughs> love the visual. So uh, no usually the last couple of minutes of the countdown are in control of the computer because there's so much happening in those last few minutes and there's so many uh, there's so much real-time data coming in to keep track of and there's all this pre-established limits so the computers are watching all that happen. Now there's still humans in the loop and if they see anything that they're concerned about they can still still stop it but you know the the figurative button pushing is actually done by the computer now as far as who makes the call um, you know again all those experts that we talked about previously you know they're all giving their go um, along the way during the countdown and all those goes kind of tree up to a, a key couple of people so on the NASA side um, all of our goes tree up to the NASA launch director and the launch director will then give that go over to United Launch Alliance, who has also been polling their team, before they can give the final handoff to the computer for the final countdown. That is so exciting. So we're glad to know that LSP will be in that poll to say go for launch when it's time for GOES T. Uh, thank you so much, Andy, for joining us. And we are hashtag ready to GOES. Thank you. Thanks for All having right, me. now we're going to bring on Pam Sullivan. We're going to switch you guys out. We're going to swap some mics over here. And Pam Sullivan is the manager for the GOES R program from NOAA. We're going to get her mic up and then we're going to have her positioned right here in front of our countdown. Just a second. All right. We need a mic test. Are we good? All right. I had Diet Coke for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a, you know, a balanced breakfast, Diet Coke, not too bad. Well, welcome, Pam. Thank you so much for joining us oh, here. Hi, Jasmine. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. It is nice and sunny here at Kennedy Space Center. Again, we are in front of this iconic countdown clock for the GOES T mission. Uh, we have a couple questions for Pam Sullivan, manager of the GOES R program. So, what are the GOES satellites? Well, the GOES-R satellites are the most sophisticated machines ever built for monitoring weather and the environment. That is exciting. Uh, what will the GOES-T satellite do once it is in orbit, and how will people use that data? 
Yeah, so, well, after we're on orbit, after uh, the launch vehicle takes us um, up to geostationary transfer orbit, the, rock, um, the spacecraft itself lifts itself the rest of the way up to geostationary orbit. Uh, once we're there, we uh, deploy a lot of the, uh, the solar array and the antennas that we had to fold up to get inside the rocket. We deploy them, we turn on the electronics, uh, we open the aperture doors on the instruments, um, and then take the first picture, what we call first light. Um, and so that, those first light pictures will happen sometime in May. Um, but then we actually spend a few more months checking out the instrument. We need to calibrate it, make sure it's uh, working the way we intended. And so uh, by July, we should actually be flowing our data to users. Um, and so um, people will be able to start using the data at that point. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, what people do with the data, um, the, the GOZAR satellites are actually the Swiss Army knife of, uh, of satellites, really, uh, in terms of uh, all of the instruments they have and all the channels, uh, the things that they can see um, is just amazing. It's from uh, you know, clouds and snow, um, flooding, fires, smoke, uh, volcan volcanic emissions, um, and then uh, it's got space weather instruments that can see the, the sun, uh, can measure magnetic fields and particle flux. So um, almost any dangerous thing that's happening in the environment, the GOES-R satellites will know about. Um, and in terms of the applications, they're really wide, um, really widespread. The, uh, probably the most familiar to folks is um, for watching hurricanes or other severe storms. So forecasters use the data to um, let us know if there's a storm coming our way. But they also use it for mundane weather, um, just to know if it's going to be cloudy or sunny, hot or cold where you are. Uh, but then industries use it too. Um, you know, the en energy industry uses our forecasts to uh, tell how much energy their customers are going to need so that they're producing the right amount. Uh, transport companies use it to make sure that their planes and ships and trucks don't end up in dangerous conditions. Um, uh, fire managers use it um, sometimes to detect fires, but once a wildfire is started, they use the data to see where the wildfire might spread based on um, winds and, and other conditions so that they can safely deploy uh, firefighters around it. Um, and then our space weather instruments also use for forecasts, different kinds of forecasts, but uh, they forecast things like whether there'll be trouble with uh, radio signals or the GPS signals or whether there'll be conditions that are actually dangerous for space tourists. Wow, yeah. that is exciting. So I like your example of the Swiss Army knife, yeah. and I would like to say that the GOES satellites, honestly, that's that's life-saving science that they're doing because we yeah. are not unfamiliar with hurricanes here in Florida, so that is very exciting. Uh, one more question for you. Uh, when we say the GOES-T uh, satellite is part of the GOES-R series, what does that mean? Yeah, well, GOES-T is part of a very long family of GOES satellites. Um, the GOES-R series is the most recent generation, um, but really the first GOES satellite was launched in 1975. That was GOES-1. Um, so the fifth generation GOES-R um, is a series of four satellites. We tend to build them in blocks because we know we're going to need more than one of them. So GOES-R has R, S, T, and U. Uh, so T is obviously the third uh, of that. Uh, and so the um, uh, if, uh, if all things go well, um, GOES-T will be the uh, 19th satellite, uh, GOES satellite that's launched and the uh, 18th that actually goes into operational service. Wow, that is exciting. Almost 50 years of science that the GOES satellites are doing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Pam Sullivan. Again, we ask that you continue to follow along with the GOES-T mission using hashtag ReadyToGoes. Thank you.